I'm Bridget Fettesey, and this is your Dumpster Fire for the week of September 27th to October 3rd. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. Well, this is going to be a fun one because holy sh... Stroll in chief. Trump tests positive for coronavirus. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, boom, 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 <laughs> I can't. It's just, I'm sorry. It's not funny, but it's... at the time that we're going to record this, we have a president who's in the hospital. And I just want to start out by saying I do hope everybody in the hospital right now of coronavirus from Melania to Trump to anyone else who might be in the hospital does recover. I wish them well. This is a serious virus that we should take seriously. That being said, what a shit show. Yeah. Totally. That being said, we also don't take anything seriously on this show. So yeah, we don't take anything seriously. And I'm sorry, but the irony of this it is not funny that anyone gets a virus, but the irony of someone who particularly may have called the virus a hoax or diminished its seriousness is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Somebody on Twitter, uh, it was a great joke. I think it was Dan Savage. He said, this is like Ronald Reagan getting AIDS. <laughs> 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 That's a perfect joke. And we're allowed to laugh still in 2020, the last time I checked, even if it's just here in this undisclosed location with the three of us. Where they can't find us yet for thought crimes. <laughs> yeah. We're, I'll be, it's literally going to be me doing a struggle session on Twitter in like three weeks. Cut to me being like, I apologize for saying this and that. And it's going to be like, like Chunk in the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll talk. In third grade, I cheated on my history exam. In fourth grade, I stole my Uncle Max's toupee and I glued it on my face when I played Moses in my Hebrew school play. And then there was the time I said retarded on Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time this airs, which was Monday, which is ex approximately 370 news cycles from today, which is Saturday, Trump may or may not have recovered. We may or may not be having a judiciary hearing. It is 18 levels of infuriating that our government doesn't take this seriously enough that they're now all not functioning and cannot meet to address the fact that we were trying to get a relief bill passed for the millions of Americans who were shut down, staying home, and have basically had to completely uproot their lives because they were doing the right thing and taking this seriously uh -huh. and our leaders are hobnobbing like the people in the capitol in the hunger games <laughs> <laughs> they're all shaking hands like there's no freaking pandemic <sighs> unfortunately for everybody pandemics don't care whether you believe in them or not yeah it's wild out there and it's rapidly changing i actually have no idea what the monday news cycle will hold all we know right now for sure is that Trump may or may not have been on oxygen. You know, it came off uh, that we were trying to hide something, which wasn't necessarily true. He may or may not be getting better or doing poorly. The fact of the matter is, is that he's doing really well. And what else do we know? We know that he's at Walter Reed Memorial Hospital, or yes. so they say. Yes, <laughs> allegedly. We're getting great reports from the doctors. This is an incredible hospital, Walter Reed. I mean, this is like serious freaking North Korea vibes right now. Yeah. Or like Soviet Union, don't worry, nothing to see here. There's no radiation coming from Chernobyl. Uh -huh. What kind, What is even happening? I don't, I, and the media and our leaders have just flamed all of their credibility and the administration. So nobody has any credibility. Nobody knows what's actually going on. No one knows what, what to believe. If you are feeling crazy, you absolutely should be. <laughs> <laughs> you are not alone. I can't do anything but laugh because I laugh in uncomfortable situations. That's my coping mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. People keep getting mad at me. They're like, this isn't funny. I'm like, 
it's pretty funny. It's kind of funny. <laughs> it's pretty funny. You can't take, it's so absurd, you cannot possibly get your mind around it because it's so surreal. It is the definition of a fantasy, which th- for those of you who are just joining us, is when reality becomes parody, which is the state we're in. And the vacuum of dis and misinformation is filled with conspiracy theories. And my conspiracy theory is that they're just working on the AI for the deep fake Trump that is now going to be our leader. (laughs) (laughs) Forever. God bless our president. I will die for him. I will die for that man happily. He is a hero, that man. Okay, Trump's tax returns were released by the New York Times like that, 9 million years ago. Yeah, that seems like a really a news story that came out um, ages ago. We're basically at the point now where we realize much of this news is obsolete and it doesn't even matter anymore because LOL, nothing matters. But we're basically recording these now and have been this whole time as preservation for the aliens when they're trying to patch together what happened to our society directly before it collapsed. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Taxes came out. Allegedly, he only paid $750. There was a story that dropped the night before the COVID news of Trump dropped that actually he did pay taxes. He paid them. It was an IRS credit that they owed him money from him overpaying before but nobody read that story and nobody probably will so what we know for sure is he did or didn't pay taxes so we he may (laughs) like everything in 2020 he may or may not have paid taxes and um we really don't know where to find anything that's true and if anyone has a reliable news source out there we would appreciate hearing about it i'm not reliable and i don't want anyone coming to me for any kind of expectations of reliability but our show is very reliable but our show is reliably inconsistent yes our show (laughs) you can rely on the fact that we will be mocking things and we'll fact check 80% of things. Yes. (laughs) Sometimes we will, yeah. And we rely on you, actually, boys, to fact check us when we can't. Because we know you're going to. (laughs) Whether we We like it or not. We know you live for it. We live for you, (laughs) dear watchers. All right, then we have Melania hates Christmas. I hate Christmas, too. (laughs) I never felt so close to the First Lady as I did in this moment. And in these recordings that her friend... recorded, which is a shitty thing to do. Yeah. You know, who gives a f*** about the Christmas stuff and decoration, but I need to do it, right? Yeah, but 100%. You have no choice. You're a shitty person if you do this to anyone and especially your friend and release them. And she was saying that she hated all the Christmas decorations and who cares? I can relate to this. Who hurt you, Bridget? Sam, speak up so the audience Who hurt you, Bridget? Can hear you. Sam takes it personally because she takes Christmas very. She takes decorating for anything I very love seriously. The holidays. <laughs> there were a lot of pumpkin spice pumpkin <laughs> spice candles around here constantly. Yeah, Sam is like she has the pumpkin spice hand. She has like hand so- soap <laughs> soaps for each holiday, like Halloween hand soaps and when, Christmas hand soaps. And you appreciate it, soap. and you all appreciate the Halloween it. Halloween hand soap did smell really good. Oh my god! <laughs> but Mal- still, I was like, Maggie. oh my god, this has like a witch on it. This is specifically pulled out just for Halloween. Yep. Nope. I I don't like all that tchotchke stuff. It's clutter. You call it decorations. I call it clutter. You're like, I like a nice clean set. <laughs> yes, I like nice clean lines <laughs> and <laughs> primary colors. Not too many competing patterns. Not a lot of noise. <laughs> not a lot of visual noise. <laughs> the other funny thing about that Melania recording is that she was talking about how she's working her ass off. And we called it here on Dumpster Fire that Melania only wanted to be a sugar baby and ended up being the first lady and having to do actual work. She wanted to sit around, get facials, and be hot and pre- pretty and rich. Where I am, I put a, I'm working like a ass, my ass. I know. In Dumpster Fire for President, the debate. Oh, the debates happened too this week. My God. This would have been the primary story for this week if it wasn't usurped by the shit show that's unfolding now which is most of our government leaders have covid (laughs) the debate was uh, everybody's covered this 
it, it was a shit show. We all know that. I think that my favorite thing was a Reason article in which he said he had hope for the Republic because his 14-year-old daughter thought it was hilarious and couldn't <laughs> stop laughing the whole time, which is probably the correct take because how can we take any of these leaders seriously at this point? We can't, so we should mock them roundly. I was just getting triggered because it reminded me of my parents right before they got divorced. Why would you answer that because question? Because the you question is, the new question Supreme is, Justice, the radical question, left. Will you shut up, on, man? Listen, who is on your... Make it stop, please. Make it stop. Just make it stop. <laughs> Get divorced, America. Maybe I'm all for it. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time America split up. There's no easy the way to do that, though. No, that's the problem. Everybody talks about a civil war, and I, I urge people to get specific about what that looks like in real life because it's not red state, blue state. No. It's rich, poor. It's also urban, rural. You go 20 minutes outside of L.A. and you're in red country. Mm -hmm. Most of rural California is red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're blue state, but only because we have a lot of big cities. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what a civil war looks like other than the city slicking pussies getting their ass whooped by... The rednecks. By all the people with guns. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. are LARPers. And I say rednecks lovingly because I have a lot of redneck inside of me. I've slept with a lot of rednecks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then we have Kamala Harris says the president and his party have decided to ignore Justice Ginsburg's final wish for her seat not to be filled before the election. Already the president and his party have chosen to ignore Justice Ginsburg's final wish to hold off the nomination to replace her until after the next president is chosen. Listen up, Kamala. Kamala, this is not the Make-A-Wish Foundation. <laughs> it's not in the Constitution that you have to grant someone their dying wishes. And I doubt a judge would really want to destroy her credibility on the way out by completely undermining due process of the Constitution, that thing which she is supposed to be upholding and her entire career was devoted to. Although she wasn't a constitutionalist, she was kind of an activist judge, so maybe that was her dying wish. <laughs> but I would like to believe that you're not thinking about that on your deathbed. Maybe, who's making wishes on their deathbed? The only wish you should be making on your deathbed is not to die. My dying wish would be, I don't want to die. <laughs> Call me crazy. It just seems like that uh, one logical. That would be a tough one to grant. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's going to be, they're going to miss my Halloween soaps. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam. You basic, basic. <laughs> you basic. You basic. You basic. All right. And then we have the BDE slash RIP award. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She broke boundaries. And she did lots of things for feminism. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I love that we're such feminists. We forgot to include this last I know. week. RBG, she was an icon. RBG was an icon. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kay. all I got. <laughs> so she she's the reason why women are able to get loans without a spouse. <laughs> Maybe I should have done a little <laughs> of the house research on RGB. No, it's true. She was RBG. very influential on allowing for women's protections and rights on their own under the law, right? Yes, yes. Workplace she was very, yes, very influential woman for women's <laughs> rights and women's stuff. This segment is an embarrassment. I think we need to cut it. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Touch my bells and buttons. Touch my bells and buttons down there. <laughs> like, subscribe, and comment about your favorite Ruth Bader Ginsburg dissent. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to reading those. <laughs> Capitalism always wins. Ugh. Kissing the Coronavirus, a viral erotica ebook. She was supposed to cure the coronavirus. Instead, she fell in love with it. <laughs> this woman wrote this little short romance novel about a woman falling in love with coronavirus in an attempt to try paying the bills following her job loss. Oh. We're just going to read some excerpts. I'm going to read an excerpt. It had been so long since Alexa had been with a man that the virus was the only thing she could get near to which gave her any sort of thrill. The tickle in her knickers. When she worked with the sample, 
was the only sexual release she had experienced since the virus had unleashed hell and taken its hold on the world. <laughs> and now she held it in her hand, gripped it tight. She bit her lip. <laughs> she rubbed her hand. <laughs> she wrapped her hand over her breast, her nipple hardening like a Tic Tac. <laughs> Imagine how she would feel if she touched herself with it. Pretty great, Alexa thought. Pretty great, indeedily. It says indeedily. <laughs> oh my god. Alexa lowered the test tube and unbuttoned the bottom two poppers on her lab, lab coat. Pop, pop. She took the test tube and shook it. The bubbling, creamy liquid sloshed against the inside of the tube. It fizzed up and Alexa swore she could feel the glass expanding, swelling up and down as she shook the tube. A shock of electricity coursed through her veins, eventually stopping as it reached her vagina. It was like she sat on a battery. Everything tingled and it felt good, but Alexa knew it could feel better, much better. Alexa pulled down her lab pants and pulled her panties to the side. Her pussy so wet that the lace glided across her skin like a fat man on a water slide. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you're going to have to buy the book if you want to find out what happened. Why is that the image that's supposed to conjure hotness? What kind of weird, like, you're kind of getting into it. You're like, yeah, okay. Wait, what? A fat man on a water slide is supposed to get me wet right now? Capitalism might be the loser in this situation. <laughs> but you know who's winning? Fat guys on water slides. <laughs> They're the real winners in this. All right. And then in California. California adds COVID-19 equity requirement. All right. This is insane. Basically, they're the layman's way of explaining this equity metric that they've added is that we can't open the county until the poor stop dying. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not funny. But they're trying to get everything to a certain percentage. And because this is disproportionately hurting specific populations, they decided to add this equity metric in order to open up the entire county. But that's ridiculous because who do you think that will hurt even more? Like, who the fuck do you think is going to be hurt by the county not opening? The rich? No, they're all fleeing California and moving to Texas, Idaho, and Tennessee. They're not st sticking around. And it's the poor who need to get back to work and go and make some money. And so this thing that's ostensibly supposed to help them is probably just going to keep them locked in poverty. And I guess apparently we don't have enough homeless people in Los Angeles. It's such bullshit. Equity metrics aren't about public health. They're about critical theory. It's applying critical theory to public health. And that is nice and all, except it's really just for optics and ends up hurting the people they're supposed to be helping. And I I, I really wish King Newsom would get recalled. Uh huh. Also in bullshit that Newsom is pulling, <laughs> California governor vetoes bill to track how millions are being spent on homeless. Oh, so you don't want data collection in this instance, except that's what we need in the other instance. And we voted twice to increase our taxes so that we can help the homeless. And it's a bipartisan bill that now got vetoed by freaking King Newsom because he doesn't want us to track where our tax dollars are going to help because clearly the problem isn't getting any better. It's getting worse, whatever they're doing with it. It's getting worse every single day. I just think it's the big homeless industrial complex. All these contractors are getting insane amounts of money to build two houses to house 150 people for like $100 million, which you could build 300 places for. And we have a right to know where that money is. This state is garbage. Yeah. It is garbage. And, it, and there's no checks and balances on Newsom. You want to talk about somebody who is a tyrant that has complete power over the government? Newsom. 
More than anyone. More yeah. than any leader in America right now. This was a bipartisan bill that sailed through with no opposition whatsoever. No, someone, someone needs to do a deep dive on the big homeless industrial complex because follow the money. Follow the money. I pro I feel like Cardi B. Remember when she went off about her taxes? What the fuck is my money? Show me my money. So what is y'all doing with my money? What is y'all doing with my money? Speaking of people pooping on the streets. Because <laughs> that's always our lead in for pooper. Pooper, the app that keeps on giving, giving and giving and giving if you have an iPhone. If you have an Android, you don't get to partake in so much fun because Pooper is an app where you can take stickers of animals that are peeing and pooping and farting and send them to your friends about anything that they say or any articles they might be sharing with you or any ridiculous statements they might be making or any type of group chat deserves as many Pooper animals as possible in it. I would poop on every single person in a group chat. <laughs> as long as they all had iPhones. <laughs> yeah, there's always that one asshole without the iPhone that f***s up the whole group chat. Get them out of there. Click on the link in the description below and you can download it right now. It's 99 cents. <laughs> and then in canceled. <laughs> oh, I know what vibe I have today. G I dream genie. Mm. Do -do -do. I liked her so much more than Samantha. Bewitched. Yeah. Wow, I'm right here, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You're fired. <laughs> You're fired. Just for that joke. You're fired. American cyclist was suspended over a pro-Trump tweet. We don't really know what he was actually suspended for. I believe they just said that it was inappropriate use of social media. And so I don't think they ever specified what it was. He used a, a black emoji hand to wave bye after a reporter said, if anyone likes Trump, unfollow me now. And he got accused of racism for racism. using like the wrong emoji hand color. Yeah. And for his politics of liking Trump, which. Right. And all he said was something about like supporting the country with an American flag emoji. It was pretty innocuous. Well, I'm, you know, this is where the free market, free speech debate always kind of collides with technology and social media, because what's considered appropriate and where can you really control what people are saying? I don't think you should be able to control the political opinions of people who are working for you if you are a company outside of work. Uh -huh. And what's outside of work if you're a public figure and you're on social media? It's all very complicated. I just don't, this is unsettling to me. <laughs> and then Ireland's Supreme Court rules that Subway's bread does not meet the legal definition of bread. <laughs> That's because the Irish, I'm so bad at accents. <laughs> yeah, you are. Wow. That's because the Irish, I'm not as good as the guy we, we showed last week. <laughs> not all of us can be accent geniuses. I was just joking that it's because the Irish consider beer to be bread. <laughs> <laughs> they have high standards for their bread. Yeah. I don't know if the Irish should be commenting on what's food, though. Have you been to Ireland? Their food is good, but it's not anything to write home about. <laughs> Ooh, world traveler fantasy. It's meat and potatoes. This bread was deemed to have too much sugar in it, and it's basically like a confection-type bread. Subway knows that their bread is not food, just like they knew that that dude who was representing them was a pedo. <laughs> Jared. <laughs> Bold words. <laughs> Proof we're living in a simulation. In 2018, Joaquin Oliver was shot and killed in the Parkland shooting. His parents used AI to bring him back to tell people how voting can prevent these kinds of tragedies from happening to any more families. Yo, it's me. Nope. Nope. No. Nope. No, no, no. no. It's Guac. No, no. no. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. I've been gone for two years and nothing's changed, bro. This video is terrifying. We are living in a Black Mirror episode. In fact, I think Black Mirror did an episode exactly with this plot. <sighs> nope. 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 Uh, nope. It nope. triggered my whole uncanny valley. Uh, yeah. You know, the like mm -hmm. deeply disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> and then in Parade of Morons, 
cops call a dude a Karen. <laughs> I mean, you should probably go and ask during a global You're the person that calls them. someone, you know what I mean? Like, if someone's selling like, water bottle on the streets, well, look, I, you're the person that calls them. That's what you are. All right, Karen, you're like the male version of Karen. So have a nice day. <laughs> Were these cops mass holes? They sounded like <laughs> mass holes. seemed like they should be at the very least. I love these guys. You are a freaking Karen. If Car- <laughs> Karen, Karen, Karen is Karen and moron combined. Karen! 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 <laughs> you are a freaking Karen if you can go around with a freaking camera and you're tattling on everyone. No one likes a rat. Snitches get oh. stitches, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have dumpster diving. What's next? In the dumpster. <laughs> Frenchman says tattoos cost him kindergarten teaching job. <laughs> a couple of tattoos? That seems like overkill to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the face of my night. <laughs> we must keep this man away from the children at all costs. I can't imagine why that would scare the children. He had the whites of his eyes surgically turned black. No, thank you. I love how people just think they can run around willy-nilly doing whatever they want and have no consequences. You can make yourself look like a monster and then expect to go get a job in a kindergarten. Ugh. Excuse me, sir. No. No. I'm sorry, I don't need my children screaming in their sleep because you decided in your 20s to tattoo the whites of your eyes <laughs> or in your 30s, whenever you did. Moron. Karen! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then what is happening? Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot enters news conference dressed up as Corona Destroyer to announce the city's Halloween guidelines. <laughs> That's a nice face. Our leaders <laughs> are absurd. They're, they're ridiculous. Yeah, this is what you should be really focusing on as the mayor of Chirac. <laughs> <laughs> For real, though. I don't even know what's happening. I don't, I don't even know what's happening here. Nope, that's why it's in this category. Hey, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Maybe they're just trying to line things up. Maybe they're just like, you know what? We need a little whimsy here. <laughs> Chicago. Whatever happened to whimsy? It fell a little flat. It was so it awkward, too. It just came too. across as weird. Yeah, it was, it was weird. really weird. That uh, poor, these poor people. And then we have actor Rick Moranis identified as victim of random attack on the Upper West Side. Jesus. I mean, who would do this to Mar- Rick Moranis, huh? He's just an innocent little actor on his way home. He's probably an anti-Semite or a crazy person or both. It's either or and on the Upper West Side right now because it's so crazy. It's like the one thing people online can agree about that nobody should be attacking Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis, you will bring America together and unite us once and for all. Maybe you should be running for the Unity 2020 ticket, Rick Moranis. We can get behind you, and we will all be seen because you're so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> and then in Beyond Parody, the South Park <laughs> pandemic special. What did you I... think of it, Bridget? <laughs> As if 2020 couldn't be more disappointing. Look, there were funny moments. I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but it kind of sucked and it was kind of disappointing and it felt lazy. Like a bunch of people just sitting around in an undisclosed location trying to come up with jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, what on earth could she mean? It felt a little bit lazy to me. No, I just felt like there was so much material and they tiptoed around it and it felt pretty safe to me. Uh, Like they didn't really go near any of the stuff. It felt safe. It felt safe and a little bit lazy. She has high, high standards for South Park. I just felt like it was another one of 2020's many disappointments. I was going to say I took my life and now what you're watching is AI. (laughs) And now they ran the old Bridget's through... Uh, an AI bot, and this is what you got this whole time. I've just been a bot. <laughs> and now we have a new category called <laughs> the making of a eunuch. <laughs> Prince Harry and Meghan Markle reportedly agree to film a Netflix reality show. We had this idea first. We had a great idea for a reality show for Prince Harry, and it was fantastic. It was Maggie and Sam fighting over Prince Harry. <laughs> I thought it was much more interesting than whatever they're going to come up with following them around being woke and annoying. I would also like to say that the making of the eunuch is the new category for which we will be putting all things Harry and Meghan. 
related. They have their own category now. Congratulations, Harry and Megan. You've made it to the big time here on Dumpster Fire. Right. It's a nod to a tweet. It was basically like the headline. <laughs> this was the what the guy's tweet right below the headline was the making of a eunuch. I love the internet. It's literally like, okay, that's so good. We have to name a category. There's after always that. one comment immediately that makes me realize how quick people are like this one where it's just the headline of that uh-huh. <laughs> first comment is the making of a eunuch. Uh-huh. Very sharp joke writing out there. Uh-huh. on the internet in breaking Bridget people have lost their sense of humor listen up internet people galore everyone's lost their sense of humor because everybody takes everything as a personal affront you make a joke on Twitter or say anything sarcastically everyone's so identified with their politics and their beliefs that they cannot take a single joke without acting like it's a personal attack There's a lot of hypocrisy out there right now. And hypocrisy is ripe for the picking and making fun of. And it's happening all around us. And you cannot get through life without being a hypocrite. You have to be able to make fun of yourself. You have to be able to make fun of the world. You cannot take things so seriously. When it came out that Trump had COVID, everybody... A lot of people were laughing, I think, more at the irony of it. Then there were people who were wishing him to die, which is horrible. You shouldn't wish anyone to die, especially if you're one of those people who's like, the cruelty is the point about Trump all day long, and then you're a cruel person. Don't become what you hate. This isn't hard. But then, on the other side, there are all the people who drink leftist tears and liberal tears and live to gloat and laugh at the suffering of other people who suddenly grew some empathy and were like, how dare you laugh at this? This is not funny and not a time to laugh. And clutching their pearls about anyone laughing at the irony of this situation, which the irony of the situation of our president getting COVID is frankly hilarious. So everybody just lighten up. It's not, it's serious, but eh, it's also kind of funny. And of course there's going to be schadenfreude. Of course there will be. You see it from all sides all the time. It's like Twitter in particular is like the Vegas of the social medias. It's where everybody goes to be the shittiest version of themselves. And schadenfreude is what drives the engine of that entire mechanism. The laughing at other people's suffering or ill fortune. (laughs) Well, you were saying too, Trump set this tone himself. Yeah, people didn't like to hear that. He makes fun of everything. If Biden got coronavirus, we would never be hearing the end of it from Dear Leader, uh-huh. it, ever. He would be mocking it. He's He was making fun of Biden for wearing a mask two nights before he said he had coronavirus. I'm sorry, that is a South Park episode and hilarious. I don't wear masks like him. Every time you see him, he's got a mask. He could be speaking... 200 feet away from it, he shows up with the biggest mask I've ever seen. He was making fun of Hillary when she had a pneumonia. And she can't make it 15 feet to her car. Give me a break. Give me a break. He makes fun and mocks everything. He would be laughing at anyone in this situation. Mm-hmm. And people were like, well, I wouldn't be wishing them to die. No, not everyone was wishing him to die. People who were wishing him to die are horrible people. Anyone wishing anyone to die online, and I see this all the time, even when people do die, everybody's like, ding dong, the witch is dead. It's not good. Most people were just like, this is freaking ridiculous. Uh Mm -hmm. You gotta be able to laugh at everything, even the dark. The dark shit is the funniest. I know, it really is. I've been through some very dark times in my life, and perhaps this is why I have this coping mechanism, because laughter has truly truly saved my life and you have to be able to joke about the dark stuff we are in some darkly hilarious times (laughs) darkly hilarious i pray for everyone who has lost their sense of humor in this darkly hilarious time because it's the only way you've got to stay hopeful you've got to stay positive you have to kind of keep going put one foot in the uh, front of the other otherwise you can let this stuff just collapse you into a pit of despair and nihilism and that is not good for anyone it's certainly not good for you look around at your immediate life take stock of your relationships control what you can control always look on the bright side of life always look on the bright side of life that's dumpster fire we here at dumpster fire we disagree with everyone and don't want anyone to die that's just our stance 
Well said. Thank you. If we lose our sense of humor, we're lost. We have some Internet is Glorious to cheer you up after that darkly hilarious rant. Listen carefully to the sound. Those soft liberal hands, put them on me, on my body. Just slowly, gently dragging your fingers up and down my arm, giving me goosebumps. You want my gun? Come kiss me for it. We want your freedom. Bite my lip and play with my hair for my firearm. If you want my gun, come spank me for it. Well, I keep you down. And in fantasy news, David French is on walk-ins. Welcome. I was in the Babylon Bee. I don't know that we've been promoting this, but I'm a new voice in a cartoon, Babylon Bee. I play a drunk newscaster, and it's amazing, and I love it. The debate was Tuesday evening, but hopefully you listened to our warnings and didn't watch. So instead of showing you the debate, we'll simply act it out. The economy is great. Everyone is doing great, except for haters and losers who deserve to start. The economy is not doing great. You're an idiot. Trump is failing you everyone. You don't know what you're talking about. That's not what... It's really fun. So check that out and subscribe to the Babylon Bee YouTube channel. Subscribe to Fetacy.com and you can see the unedited version of this show every single week on Sundays. We launch it before. We launch the edited version here on YouTube on Mondays. So do that. Join us. It's also an amazing community of people who are just making jokes, laughing while the world burns. And we exercise together, me and the ladies, every day. We do Zoom calls. It's awesome. I'd like to thank you to Zen Pro Audio for the mic. I'd like to thank Better Fetacy for all the research. Couldn't do this without you. Follow Better Fetacy on Twitter. Thank you, Sammy Flaps and Folds. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you. And thank you. We have a PayPal donation button. If you'd like to contribute, you like what you're doing, you don't want to subscribe, but you say, hey, I like this. They're creative. They're funny. They take away some of the nihilism for a half an hour a week. Just uh, donate. It's right down there. We also took out all of the mid-roll ads because they were annoying to us and to our viewers. So throw down if you want. If not, we understand. We're here for you. We know it's tough times out there, but... I still am going to need you to make me rich. (laughs) And if you want a verified nobody mug or a verified nobody shirt, which is fun to wear, even if you're not a verified nobody, it's a great shirt to wear. People always look at it, too, because then they wonder, like, is that somebody? (laughs) (laughs) There are other things on the site. BridgetFetacy.com for merch. We have beanies. It's getting cold. Sweatshirts. Check it out. I think that's it. This has been your dumpster fire for the week of September 27th to October 3rd. I'm Bridget Fetacy. Now make me rich. A fat man on a slip and slide. <laughs> 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 <laughs>